Hi everyone, my name is Juliana, and I want to tell you about my unusual eyes, or rather about their properties. I'm sure many people would like to have the same abilities like me, because it really is worth it. Until recently, I knew nothing about it. I like to read books a lot, my mother even forbade me when I sat for hours on end, engrossed in another book. At home, I was affectionately called a bookworm. It was true. My room was more occupied by a shelf of fiction than by things, as many girls were. When my mother would put me to bed, I would pull out a flashlight and take up reading again. Mom would find me with an open book on my face. There was nothing she could do about my addiction, and in the meantime, my vision went down to minus four. The doctors prescribed massage, treatments, drops, and more glasses or lenses. But I had a strong reaction to lenses, so I had to wear ugly glasses. It became my pain, my lifelong complex. I was now called a bespectacled boy at school, and it was horrible. One day, I was told to bring a stack of notebooks from the teacher's lounge. I went there in the middle of class, picked up the stacks, and carried them into the classroom, but didn't notice that the floor was wet. Someone had spilled water. I tripped and fell and rolled down the stairs, broke my glasses, and spilled all the books. They got wet. They were our test answers. I went into the classroom terribly upset, but there was nothing to do about it. I apologized, but the kids didn't forgive me for messing up their papers. Everyone mocked me, scolded me. Even the teacher was not happy. I understood, but what could I do if my eyesight was so bad? In the end, as punishment, I was sent to clean the library that day. It was terribly dusty and dark in there. Not only could I see nothing without my glasses, but I also had to put all the books back in order. Are you shitting me? You'd think I'd fallen and messed up all my work on purpose. All the same, I have to rewrite everything, and they do too, so why punish me so harshly? I was left after school, so I slowly grabbed a rag and a bucket and went to the library. The local librarian was an old grandmother. She only slept on a chair and did nothing else. I got to work, two hours had passed, and I was still trying to read the titles of books I couldn't make out. Screw it! I was so angry that I threw the book on an empty shelf, and the weight of the volume broke the shelf a little. What the hell? Ugh, what a day! What are you saying there? Nothing. Go back to sleep. Don't be rude. You heard it, right? What? Nothing. I angrily went back to the shelf, tugged it, and suddenly I noticed some kind of gleam behind me. I reached out, and I saw a ring. Hmm, strange. Who could forget a ring amongst books? I took it out. It was very beautiful. I think it had a diamond in it. I put it on my finger, and then I decided to ask if it was the librarian's. Excuse me, ma'am, is this yours? Granny was silent. She was sound asleep and didn't wake up at all. Then I decided to keep it. So I scrubbed the floors, and I found something else shiny in the corner. It was an earring. A few feet away, I found a necklace. Wow, I wonder whose these are. Maybe someone dropped them and couldn't find them? Of course, it's so dark in here. I just wonder how I can see them. My eyesight isn't very good at all. I took everything I found and kept it, hiding it in a box at home. The next day, I went back to the library to continue the cleaning, but there was nothing there anymore. Apparently, I had taken everything. I wondered how I had seen them. It didn't take long for me to check. I went into the classroom and saw the teacher looking for something. Did you lose something? Oh yes, I lost my earring clasp. Now I can't find it. It's too small. I looked around for a while, and then I saw it. Well, there it is, right by your feet. Oh right, I wouldn't have noticed it. It's so small. Thank you, those earrings are very precious to me. However, there is one left. I lost the other one. Can I see it? Yes, of course. While I was looking at it in her hand, I realized that it was the same one I found in the library. My father gave them to me before he died. I lost the first one somewhere. The clasp is weak, so I wear the second one as a memento of him. If I lose it too, that's it, I'll be so upset. I think I found it yesterday. You did? Where? It was in the library. I'll get it, it's at my house. I would be so grateful to you. I brought the earring. The teacher was so happy that she apologized for the punishment of cleaning the library. Come on, I found your earring. Yes, but I'm so embarrassed. I'll give you an A on the test. You don't have to rewrite it. Just let it be our little secret, okay? Deal. 
I came home happy and satisfied. Mom and I had dinner, and then she turned on the news. Well, I'm sick of all these excavations. They'll call your father again. What happened? Haven't you heard? A local businessman, Mr. Duggins, found precious metals under his land, and now he's recruiting everyone to dig under his barns to find the stones. But Daddy's retired. Who cares? Besides, whoever finds the deposits, he promises 5% of the proceeds and a paycheck. And Dad said yes? He will. I know him. I mean, he's got experience in digging. He's worked for this Duggins guy his whole life. I'm sure he'll do it. I see. I formed a plan in my head. What if I could help my father? He wouldn't agree to take me with him, since it's kind of too dangerous. But what if I really could find something valuable? Dad got to work the very next day. I couldn't find my place, but I waited. So day one went by, day three, day seven. Mr. Duggins was getting angry. He wasn't kidding, saying that if they didn't get it done in a month, no one would get paid or get a fee. My father argued that despite the results, the workers were doing their work and at least their wages should be paid, but the businessmen had nothing to say about it. And when there were just a couple of days before the end of the work, my father came home in a rage. Not only that, there had been a little collapse due to a misfire. Everyone was alive and unharmed, but now it was hard for an adult to fit and get in without clearing. And time is money. So yes, I went there in the middle of the night. It wasn't easy for me, but I got in there with a flashlight and a helmet on my head. And guess what? It took me 10 minutes to see they were digging in the wrong direction. The precious metal itself was shining in my eyes. That's when I realized that the only thing more precious than that metal were my extraordinary eyes. By morning, I'd pulled out a whole pile and brought it home on a cart. I woke my father and mother up. Of course, they were stunned. What? How? Why did you go up there? Alone, without a safety net? It's blocked! What if something had happened to you? What if you- But nothing happened. He owes you 5% of what he found. There is more and I'll show you, Dad. Only, I need to help now. But how could you? How did you find it? If I tell you that I have a special gift with my eyes, would you believe me? What does that mean? It's a long explanation. I'll just say in some ways I was luckier than in reading books. Don't ask too many questions. I'm going to sleep. I'm so tired. And you go to him and show him what you found. I hope this won't cause too many problems for us. Well, if money is a problem for you, then it will. I don't understand. We'll talk later. I'm going to Duggins. I'll remind you of the deal. Dad did, but we agreed that Dad would say he found it himself. Duggins was thrilled. He didn't even ask how Dad got in there. Dad said he would look for more, and the two of us went down the shaft, finding even more than the first time. When Dad finished, the fortune found was estimated at several million. That way we got our good fee and a paycheck. Plus, Duggins gave Dad a huge bonus. So that's how I discovered my hidden talent. What happened next? Well, my father became famous as the best excavator and orders started coming in. So I suggested that my father just manage since he was already retired. My dad started a company and I helped him. And our business blossomed. My work fed us. Even though I remained a sightless girl in normal life, I noticed the main thing, the jewels. And I was fine with that. I didn't even agree to surgery or even drops. I didn't want to hurt myself, so I left my eyes as they were. It's been four years since then, and now we have everything in my family that we could have only dreamed of before. Isn't that cool? Hi everyone, I'm Gloria, and I have a special gift that I want to share with you now. You'll probably think I'm superhuman, and it will be partly true, because my eyes are not quite normal. The thing is, I've been blind since birth but I can see more than the sighted. In short, about everything in order, I'll start the story for now, and don't forget to like my story, subscribe to the channel, and write your opinion in the comments. I will be grateful. Well, let's go. As I said, I was born a blind girl. No one knows why this happened. My mother and father are healthy. My mother obediently showed up to the doctor every month, passed tests and so on, they were very much waiting for me, because I am their only child and welcomed. However, my parents were already aged. When I was born, 
my mother was already 46 years old. It was risky to have children at that age, but what could she do if she and father had only found each other then? My mother told me that when I was born, everything was normal. For the first two days, I slept and hardly woke up, and then the doctor noticed that I reacted strangely to light, in any way. All my other reflexes worked, but my eyes didn't. I was checked by doctors all over the department, and my mother was already worried because nothing had been explained to her yet. And when it became clear after the results of tests and a consultation of doctors, they came to my mother's room and said that her child was blind. This was a blow to my elderly parents. They were confused and had no idea what to do now. Time passed, and soon they accepted it. They were taught how to take care of their blind daughter, set up the house, and made everything comfortable for me. And then I was one year old, and my mother began to notice some strange things. I watched my mother, how she went from room to room, how she came to me. I screamed and cried when I saw her leave the room where I was sitting. At first, she thought I could hear her footsteps, but then she and dad started experimenting. They walked on tiptoe and noticed that I still seemed to notice them with my eyes. And when my dad brought home my first toy and handed it to me, and then moved it to another corner and I went to it, they realized that I could still see. It was incredible, because in the hospital, all the doctors unanimously assured them that I was blind, that my eyes were not responding. But at the same time, I looked at the doctors saw their faces. I saw a window, a door, and I went there. I really liked the sunlight and my eyes longed to look at the sun. My gift became a sensation in the medical field. Many doctors invited me to their homes for free, just to study, look, feel. At first, my parents were willing to drive here and there, but then they got tired, just like me. Then I learned how to talk, and I asked my mom and dad to give it up and let me stay at home. Around the age of four to five, people around me got used to me. My mom and dad bought me special sunglasses so people wouldn't notice my eyes, so no one would ever guess I was blind. But I don't see everything. Some details remain invisible. I saw more silhouettes, energy, and sometimes colors. I also had something that scared my mother. It was only as I got older that I realized what my pictures meant. The fact is that each person had their own color and it burned next to their heart. Well, how can I explain it to you? It's a kind of soul. Each had its own color. For example, if it was dark, then the person is old and he will soon die or he is very ill. If it is yellow or orange, it means that everything is fine with it and it is young. Rather, it is a child or a teenager. This way, I could see through almost everyone, including myself. My mother and father were at first afraid of this discovery, but then they also got used to it and kept it a secret from others. This gift helped me in society, when meeting people. I also felt who was good and who was bad, and I tried to avoid the latter and also protected my parents from them. I even went to a school for the blind. By the way, I was not at all embarrassed by the status of a person with disabilities because I am no worse than others. And as my mother says, on the contrary, I am special. Since then, many years have passed and I have learned to live with my gift among others. I've communicated, met people, and everything is fine. My mother made me promise that I would never reveal my secret so that there would be no problems, and I agreed with her. Well, once my friends and I went for a walk, it was a sunny day. I loved to bask in the rays. While my friends went to choose a new perfume, I decided to wait for them on the street on a bench. Suddenly, I felt a negative energy. It was coming fast, very fast. I turned my head and noticed that a man was driving at breakneck speed. He was very bad. I felt that he was not sober. And then I heard that a child was running out to the road. It was a girl of four years old. 
Her mother was talking to someone on the side of the road and did not notice how her daughter was running towards the road. The driver saw the child, but he was so drunk that he couldn't even think to stop. I ran to the side of the road, grabbed the child, and pulled him to myself. The car flew past and didn't stop. His mother screamed all over the street. My glasses fell to the ground, and so did my wand for the blind. I was holding the baby in my arms when my friends came out. All the people froze. The mother took the child and began to thank me, and only then realized that I was blind. I saw the frozen questions on people's faces. They were all scared and shocked. Their energy was telling. I couldn't explain anything, so I said I wanted to go home. My friends didn't say a word on the way. They just took me home, kissed me, and left. I had to tell my mother everything. She praised me for my bravery, but now there was a problem, because now I had witnesses. My girlfriends told everyone else. Plus, passers-by took everything on camera. So fame was assured the next morning. My parents had to pay a tidy sum to keep it in the local press. They wanted me to live a quiet life. About six months later, we decided to move to another city, and the story remained a legend. I had to cut all ties with my friends, and my parents also with their friends, because now we have a new life. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing that we're running away from attention, but on the other hand, I'm thinking about how to use my gift correctly. After all, if I saved one life, maybe I can save another. What do you think?